Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with www.learnvisualstudio.net. In this final module in this course, uh, we're going to talk about where you go next, and we're also going to talk about the things that we've already learned, just as a recap. And then finally, I want to give you some resources and some ways that you can try to stay on top of it all. I mentioned that was one of the biggest challenges at the outset, was uh, what, what do you put in place? How can you ensure that now that you're getting caught up, you never get left behind again. So we'll talk about that in a moment. So first of all, uh, you'll recall, hopefully, this slide from the very beginning of uh, this course, and it laid out for you the four courses in this series of courses. Again, we split it all up because it's going to be so large. So the very next course that you should go to now is the uh, Microsoft Azure Fundamentals website. If it's not available right now, check back in a couple uh, weeks because it will be available very soon. So uh, let's talk about the things that we actually uh, went through in this series. We talked about Microsoft Azure at a very conceptual level. In fact, that was kind of the purpose for this entire uh, course. Uh, we talked about the ways in which it benefits businesses, about how Azure will fit into a typical application architecture, whether that be from a software perspective, uh, a systems perspective, or a network perspective. We talked about, you know, again, at a very high level, the main parts of Microsoft Azure and the types of things that will allow your organization to do or allow you as an entrepreneur to do. Uh, we talked about the main tools that we'll use to touch Microsoft Azure, the APIs that we can use to automate it, how we can use common tools like PowerShell and even C Sharp and Node.js and Java to, uh, to script out deployment, uh, stand up, tear down kind of activities. Um, we talked about the implementation of Azure from a physical perspective, about how there are data centers around the world and just how, they're, uh, how they were, it was all set up and uh, the different, uh, the different um, uh, generations of the facilities, how large they are, how much compute power there is, and things of that nature, and some of the ramifications of those as we, uh, as we decide where we're going to deploy our services around the world. So... Uh, we also talked about then uh, accounts and subscriptions and uh, how to set it up for a larger organization. Again, uh, we said, hey, if you're just doing it for yourself, there's really not a lot to know because you own everything. But if you work in a larger organization, you're going to want to spread and delegate some of the responsibilities to other members of the team. So we uh, discussed how to do that. We discussed the role of uh, Azure Active Directory and how to add users to a directory, what that really gives you, what can they do now that they're in this directory. Uh, we talked about the various roles, not just in directories, but also at a subscription level. Um, and then we talked about the typical use cases, the kinds of things that you're often going to find yourself doing whenever you are administering users and directories and then also administering services for subscriptions. All right, so let's talk about how uh, to stay on top of, of Azure once we get caught up and as we begin to learn more and more. Probably the best source of information is, uh, well, first of all, I have to say, uh, I think I'm contractually obligated to say that Microsoft Virtual Academy is the place that you should go to first. There are a ton of courses out there already. In fact, I kind of asked the question, why do you need me to do this? Uh, there are so many great courses by so many good uh, and knowledgeable uh, instructors and they've even got them split up and they will help you dig down much deeper than I'm able to do in this series of courses because that's really not the purpose of this. But uh, anywhere you see the word cloud and there's several different categorizations and there might be more that are missing here, uh, definitely drill down to that and see and find if there's any topics that interest you and, and become an expert in that one little niche first and then spread out from there if you like. But uh, as far as incoming news, the, the new developments that happen almost day by day. I found the best source to be Scott Guthrie's blog. I mean, he is, uh, I don't know his exact title, I think Vice President of Azure. I'm not sure exactly what his title is. I apologize if he's watching. Uh, but he owns it all, essentially. And he will make these great announcements with very detailed explanations. Detailed and yet at a high enough level that you don't have to have a, a, a deep background to understand what the purpose of that is. And he usually gives you links to kind of dive off and get deeper. So Scott Guthrie's blog, that's the number one place. You need to subscribe to his blog through RSS. And I'll talk about how you can do that and actually read your RSS feeds uh, in, in just a minute. The next great place that I found was Scott Hanselman's Azure Friday. So every, every Friday he releases a new video with somebody on uh, a team 
from uh, one of the Azure services. It looks like, as I'm recording this, this uh, he talks about the service bus with, uh, with a member from the service bus team. And the next place after that that I found that's extremely helpful is the, uh, the cloud cover show. I think it's about once a week that they release a new video and they're usually between 40 minutes and an hour 20 long. So it's a little bit longer of a commitment than Azure Friday, which is usually a 15 minute uh, video. But if you can just commit to reading uh, Scott Guthrie's blog, following Azure Friday, and then whenever a new cloud cover show comes out to watch it, I think you're going to find that you'll keep yourself abreast. Even though you're not working on projects today that require Azure, you're going to know the full scope of what Azure can do, what's new, and what it can do for your organization. Now, here's where the challenge comes in, right? Because uh, in the past, I mean, a lot of people like to think that they follow their RSS feeds and they may subscribe to 1,000 RSS feeds for various blogs, but if you're like me, you almost never actually open up a blog reader or an RSS reader. Uh, so I had to find a better way to go about this. And the thing that occurred to me at some point is that the, uh, the inbox, my email inbox, is my to-do list, it's my communication device. If it goes into my inbox, I'm gonna see it. I can't avoid it. So I found a service years ago, and unfortunately it went out of business, but I found a new service that will actually allow me to create um, kind of to automate some things like whenever a new a new uh, item comes in in an RSS feed it will send me an email and you can see that I create these recipes which are basically if this happens then that in fact that's the name of the site if this then that or if ttt.com uh, go there create a free account you never have to pay anything at least not yet uh, and you can see that a lot of these are kind of the same well there's a few that aren't but I have over a hundred different recipes and most of them are following blogs. So let me show you how to create a quick recipe and we're going to follow the cloud cover show because I don't think I've covered that one yet. Let's go to cloud cover. Always look for this little subscribe icon. In fact, let's take a look. Scott Guthrie's blog has one there and there's Azure Friday and there it is right there. So you can always find that little orange icon sticking out of somewhere. And so then I'll just click it and it's going to give me you know, uh, basically either a bunch of XML or it's going to give me kind of a formatted version of the XML. But I'm going to copy that URL from the location bar and then I'm going to start creating a recipe. I'll click if this, if, and I'll type in feed. There we go. If, a feed, if there's a new feed item, then I'll stick in the URL and I'll create the trigger then that, and I'll choose email. Now I'll have to register and tell it what my email address is to kind of set all this up, but I want it to send me an email. And so these, you can see that these are kind of the replaceable items. Here will be the RSS uh, entry title, the RSS content. And then what I can do in here is just put cloud cover, and this will remind me of what this particular incoming item is uh, versus all the other ones that come in. So I use this little square bracket. It's a little convention that I created for myself. Then I hit create action. It's going to ask me to confirm this. I'm going to create the recipe. And now <laughs> it looks like the recipe's created. Every time there's a new cloud cover show, I'm notified of it. It stays in my inbox unread until I watch the show and then I delete it and I have all the information up here or I take notes and send them to myself again in my email account. So that's how I stay on top of things and you can always take a look at my, uh, my recipes. I think you can get to them. I think I've shared them out somehow. Once I figure out how I did it, I'll publish the URL on screen right here. Okay, uh, so at any rate, let's continue on. There's a couple of other resources that I found extremely helpful. Um, for example, uh, this book, uh, so, uh, Cloud Cover is hosted by Chris Reisner and uh, Hashi Bai, and uh, Hashi wrote a book, and it happens to be what I consider to be the best book on Microsoft Azure today. It's thorough, uh, he knows what he's talking about, he has great step-by-step -step instructions, and furthermore, um, he, uh, I think he does a great job just expl explaining things conceptually. And I've read this all the way through. It's actually, I mean, I have like 
you know, crumbs and stuff inside of this because I lived with this book for, for a couple of weeks. Uh, I highly recommend his book. And then the, finally, I'd recommend that you take a look at Azure Conf 2014. It's a series of presentations. Uh, at the time of, that I record this, it was just like a week and a half ago that they did this. Uh, I think over a day or two worth of presentations on Azure uh, in the current state actually uh, presented by program managers, the owners of that particular service or product. So I highly recommend that. Okay, I think that's all that I really wanted to say uh, as I wrap up this particular uh, course. We'll see you in the next course uh, that I'll start recording now. <laughs> and we'll see you there. Thank you.